Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 66 of your favorite podcast, Survival of the Fitted. We're on a super cool vibe here today. You know what I'm saying? Nothing major. Mm-hmm. You know, it's your boy, Finals Joe, going through my finals week. And we got none other than Ian Pierino. How are you doing today? And but when he says that, I'm good. When he says that, he means Thank school you. finals. He's not like going to the Eastern Conference finals or Western Conference yeah, finals. Sadly. He means like, what, what, what classes do you have? Left that I'm uh, theater, a couple uh-huh. communication classes, an anthropology class, and a biology class. I think that's it. That's five. Yeah. Okay. So when you're like, oh, I'm actually too busy to do any work today, Ian. I actually can't help out with anything. I'm focused on school. You're referring to theater, anthropology, and a few communications classes, bro. You want to tell... I don't want to get on here and say what I had to do <laughs> yesterday, but thou oh, don't even play with me. Yesterday, I was up for like 14 hours straight doing work. Don't even play with me. That's not the time. But the good news is, give me like, what's today? We're recording this on May 17th. Joe Williams has three days mm-hmm. left in his school life career so after this it's gonna be lit you know what i'm saying it's gonna be lit but right now a little few days left you know welcome to adulthood my boy um but on some not adult vibes uh we talked about this a few weeks ago on the pod um the fact that like supreme is super lame but supreme is pretty cool like supreme makes some pretty cool pieces And on Instagram today, we both saw there's a Supreme Doc Martin collab coming up, and they're sick. You and I both tweaked out. No, yeah. So I, I have to double back. I'm sorry. I know you sent me this like mm-hmm. half an hour ago, and you're like, yo, Supreme Doc Martin. I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm a fan of Doc Martin. He's kind of a fan of yeah. Supreme. I have a couple pieces that I like. But then I saw him on foot. So for me... I fall in the like the, the minority here when I say that like I'm only a fan of like the Jaden Boot Doc Martens. Like yeah. if you're not giving me the two inch platforms and you're not making me taller, then I gotta pass on you. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know how I feel about these now because I thought they were Jaden boots, but apparently they're not. So no, it's just like the low top, like the it's not a sneaker, but like this the sneaker doc. And for those that haven't seen it, it's just like a white. There's three different pairs, a black one, a white one, and a red one. And each of them have like a uh, spider web graphic on top. It kind of reminds me of the suit that Bull Bull wore to the NBA draft yeah. when he dropped like the 50th pick. So he was just like sitting in the green room looking like fly as hell. Um, it's ironic because I don't think anyone's like draft suit got more TV time than Bull Bull cause just because he was there for so long. But he wore like <laughs> that sick, like I think actually think it was like a YSL suit. Yeah, like, I think Duggar designed thug, it or yeah, something thug, like yeah. that. Free thug, free um, thug, free thug, free thug. Um, but no, nah, dude, come on, these are sick, dude. Doc Martens has no, yeah. never missed on a collab. Like, think of all the recent Doc Martens collab. Like, Doc Martens are cool. You and I both fuck with Docs, like post yeah. sneaker world. But like, the Docs are like, they did the Rick Owens collab recently, sick. Mm-hmm. They did the A Cold Wall collab recently, super sick. And I, I actually still do think the Supreme collab is dope. the Supreme collab is cool. I, I'll pay resale for this. No, yeah, I said I would, I would put, see if they were, ugh, you know what I'm saying? They, well, you know, the little know, sneaker man. ones, they still have the platform too, right? Yeah, but it's something about the shape. I, I really can't describe it, but like, I really love the shape of like a Jaden boot. And then I see these and it's like, man, even though Bro, I really the, can't low complain, I, I got, the low top docks, the low top docks with dress socks and shorts is a, a crazy vibe. Like, let me just no, yeah, put you sure. on game. Let me I got put a you pair on of low game. Top. Yeah, I know. You got to start wearing them. I've seen you wear them. You got to start wearing them with shorts and dress socks. That's what I've been doing recently. You know what? I, the only time I wore them was sh- I wore like these short shorts. Like, I mm-hmm. mean, like super short shorts. Then I had those on and it looked so stupid. But that was the whole point. I just wanted to look stupid. And then I went to a bowling alley. But it was just like I yeah. look like the dumbest person in there. But there, I don't know if you do this, but I do this. It's like a way to like break through like any I guess like hesitation or fear about putting on clothes. When I go grocery shopping on the weekends, I purposely put on a ridiculous outfit and then I go into Target and I walk around with it. I'm sure I mentioned it on here before, but it's pretty cool exercise to just wear like stupid clothes and just walk around in public and you get used to like looking crazy in public. So you're just kind of good from there. Fire. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Moving on to basketball. I know there's going to be a lot of people listening today because we announced that we're going to just release all the League Fits Awards on here. Um, 
but I want to touch on the playoffs real quick. Um, you and I are devastated because we agree that the two best dressed teams were Minnesota and Brooklyn. They mm-hmm. both got bounced in the first round. Unfortunate. Um, and then this was the first time in probably 10 years I've rooted for a team in the playoffs. And it was the Bucks. And game seven was really hard to watch. And I like Jeez. laid on my floor for like 30 minutes, like after the final buzzer went. And he's like, because I had to watch all the way through because I had to see Thanasis play at the end. So I like watched the entire thing. I just felt like my heart had been ripped out of me. And I was like, this is what sports fans do all the time. And I forgot about that. No, same. For Minnesota, yeah. it was it Who was are rough. we rooting for in the playoffs? Okay, so who's who's left? We got Boston. Miami, Boston. Miami. Luka Doncic and oh, Golden State. 100%. I was in the second round. Because I don't really be paying attention like that. And then I realized there was two game yeah. sevens. And I was like, whoa, who's playing the game sevens? Looked it up. Yeah. It's Luka and whoever and then Milwaukee. And I'm like, okay, I need like Luka Doncic to F around and get a ring out here. So, you know, my my, uh, my sleeper pick. The guy yeah, that's like Luka never Doncic. been on league fits before. Yeah, I need I need Luka Doncic. He's just a cool dude. Like he's just like, when he's, I, was, I saw on Instagram, he was like talking crazy after like a loss. I'm like, you lost? And he's like, Everybody acts tough when they're up. And I was like, oh, he's built different. He's built different. He is tough. Man, I wish he dressed cool. Uh, For I our purposes, we need a Dallas-Miami finals. So at least we can post Tyler Harrow and PJ Tucker. Yeah. Tim Hardaway Jr. is cold, yeah. too. Yeah, Golden Tim Hardaway State, Jr. Is, yeah, they don't got no dresses on Golden yeah, no, State. We, we, already, we already know the drill there. Um, okay, we should do the thing... That we said we were going to do, which is the reason that everyone's here. If you want to know the League Fits Awards early, we're going to give them to you. And we're also going to break down the voting, like who the fans liked, who me and Joe liked, who the panel liked. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start with... Uh, everyone's already seen the honorable mentions. I'll list them real quick, though. It was James Harden, Jordan Poole, Tristan Thompson, Vanessa Sintetokounmpo, Nikhil Alexander-Walker... Gary Trent Jr. and Tyler Harrow. The third yep. team, which you guys will have seen by the time this pod drops, is PJ Tucker, Karis LeVert, Jalen Green, Miles Turner, and Jared Vanderbilt. And actually, their point totals went in that order. So PJ Tucker was the one like borderline second and third team. Um, some interesting notes is that Jared Vanderbilt um, wasn't voted even an honorable mention for pa- on the panel or by the fans, but me and Joe voted him on our second team, and that was enough to get him like the last spot on the third team. And so this is just like a PSA. Y'all got to stop sleeping on Jared Vanderbilt. Vando. Shout out Vando. Future podcast yeah. guest. Vando. We do need Vando on the pad, on the pod. I think it's like our um, third time saying this. <laughs> facts, <laughs> and then opposite of Vando. So Vando, we were the only ones to vote for him. Um, Jalen Green also, like I said, made the third team. Joe and I did not vote him for the third team or honorable mention, but he was a third team vote by the panel, and he was a second team vote by the fans. So that got him on the third team, despite me and Joe not voting for him at all, which is really. Interesting because he's the only rookie to make an all league fits team, but mm-hmm. he also didn't win rookie of the year. Who's rookie of the year, Ian? Talk Josh to him Christopher, nice. Josh Christopher is rookie of the year because he got a vote from me, he got a vote from us, and then he got a vote from the panel, and then the fans voted Jalen Green for rookie of the year. So that was just like two for three. So we're a yeah. little nuanced in the system. System low key looks like it doesn't make sense from face value, but when you look at the numbers, it actually makes perfect sense. Yeah. So Josh Christopher is the rookie of the year, despite not making a league fits team, even though Jalen Green did. And I'd say mm-hmm. that Josh Christopher probably deserved that spot. Jalen Green is super it. cool. He wore a grill to the dunk contest, but Josh Christopher's fits were like undoubtedly better. After Jalen Green pulled off that NFT necklace in the dunk contest, I knew it was it was it was destined that he wasn't supposed to win. I thought he was going to win. You know what I'm saying? You thought that shit was actually, lame? I, no, I mean, I think, I think everybody did. 
I don't know. I don't think I speak for the minority when I say that. I thought that. it was kind of cool because he like put it around Isaiah Thomas's neck. I didn't think it was that. NFTs are dumb, but I thought that was cool. But he just like took it off. I'm like, yo, why did you take? Why don't you dunk with? It? I know it probably smack him in the face or something. Like yeah, that, well, he like, took it off and put it around Isaiah Thomas's neck. That's cool. Okay, I, yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. But um, I want to say this right. Now. We can we can pull the notes back. Yeah. Fifty episodes ago. I said Josh Christopher was going to win League Fitz Rookie of the Year. We had a little discussion on here, a Jalen mm-hmm. versus Josh, who was cool. You said Jalen, I said Josh. And I just want to just, I want to like call my shot while I have it. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Josh Christopher Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Called it you were, seven months ago. You were ago. right. You were right. I even like posted like a gallery of like the all League Fitz teams. I mean, the all rookie team and like their best outfits and did like two from each player. And it was like hard to find like multiple sick Jalen Green outfits mm-hmm. uh, just because he's chill, which is dope. But, you know, anyway, he's going to turn up next year. I mean, yeah. then again, I don't know if I was right, though, because Josh was right. not on the third team. Think about that. I know, but that's talk to him because the fans, the fans like the big names. You know what I mean? The voting like is he rigged, was a guys. Second, he, Jalen Green was a second team player by the fans. Hashtag vote gate. Yeah. Hashtag Same vote gate. Yeah. Um, but we love Jalen Green over here. It's all love. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everyone's going to be really mad that PJ Tucker was third team, but there was one point sec- separating him and the second team. Joe, you want to read us the second team in order? Second team in order. What do you mean in order? Like from most to least most? Yeah. Okay. Most votes on the second team goes to none other than Jason Tatum. I like this. I like this pick. Uh, yeah. We'll just run through the order first and we can give our little takes on it afterwards. But that's cool. Second most votes on the second team goes to none other than Chris Paul. The third most yep. votes goes to Russell Westbrook. And the fourth most votes goes to Kyle Kuzma. The person who got the least amount of votes on the second team but still made the second team is none other than Survival of the Fittest. Go, uh, previous guest, Franklin Jackson. Yeah. Um, which is actually really impressive when you think about it, considering that, like, Frank, like, doesn't play 30 minutes a night and plays in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sick that he made it. He deserves this spot. He also got a huge boost from you and I. We put him on our first team. The panel and fans put them on their third team. But our little first team haymaker was Mm -hmm. enough to, to get him up. Exactly. Um, and I also wanted to say that he was a survival of fitted guest because I know a lot of people think it's a little, uh, what is it, bias. I just want to keep, uh, keep the uh, little trend going on. So, yeah, may or we may also not had be a tons bias. of guests on this podcast that didn't make any of the teams. True. Um, Kyle Kuzma and Russell Westbrook were both second team across the board by the pod panel and fans. Unanimous, mm-hmm. unanimous. Um, and then. Yeah, Chris Paul and Jason Tatum, who was actually first team by the panel and fans. You yeah. and I had him on our third team. Um, and then Jason Tatum was second for us, second for the panel, first for fans. And he was the highest vote getter for the second team. And he was actually tied. Um, he was actually tied for the last spot on the first team, which mm-hmm. went to Went to none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Shea Gilgis Alexander. You heard it right here first, yep. folks. Shea Gilgis Alexander is a part of the first team. I know you guys were going crazy about that last year, so no need to go crazy. I think we got the selection right on this one. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if we got selected, because if we look at our votes for the pod votes on Shea, we both agree that he should have been on the third team. But we had Shea on our third team. Yeah. Though I low-key kind of thing that might have to do with the fact that we ended up putting Jared Vanderbilt on our second team. <laughs> I think we had bumped, Sh- if I remember correctly, I think we had bumped Shea down to third. Oh, yeah. So that way we could right. put Vanderbilt on the second. That was, and and that sure- was a my decision, too. So I'll take the, I'll take the, yeah. the um, flag on that. Shea won the tiebreaker over Jason Tatum because the panel and fans both had him on their first teams. That's two first team votes. Um, yeah, we'll run through the rest of the first team real quick. Jordan Clarkson mm-hmm. was unanimous first team. Devin Booker was unanimous first team. And those were the only two guys to be unanimous picks. Kelly Mm -hmm. Oubre was a first team by us in the panel, but ironically second team by the fans. Fans, that's weird. Um, 
D'Angelo Russell was first team for us, second team for the panel and fans, but he also made it. Um, and then Shay had the last spot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was saying it was I, a little I was weird. Surprised that Kelly Oubre, I was surprised that Kelly Oubre wasn't a first team by the fans. That's what I was saying. I, was, I thought that was a little super weird, low key, because I feel like Kelly Oubre yeah. Jr. is like, fan favorite you know what i'm saying so like that was a little weird for me not gonna yeah lie. especially when you look at like the panel and like we're voting kelly as first team but then they're not i'm like there's times where i feel like people are asking for kelly fit picks and we're on some like oh but like he ain't really dressed them like that you guys aren't really seeing it but yeah who knows? you and i were kelly Oubre's harshest critic harshest critic in the past and we've also been like his biggest supporter because when he put the shit on he does it yeah um, for sure he uh, so the fan the fan first team was Jordan Clarkson, Devin Booker, Shea Jealous Alexander, Jason Tatum, Chris Paul. That's wild that Kelly Oubre wasn't a fan vote. Um, we can run through the before we move on to awards. You just want to run through the teams real quick so everyone can hear it. I can even I'll do it. First team: Jordan Clarkson, Devin Booker, Kelly Oubre, D'Angelo Russell, Shea Jealous Alexander. Second team is Jason Tatum, Chris Paul. Russell Westbrook, Kyle Kuzma, Frank Jackson. Third team, PJ Tucker, Karis LeVert, Jalen Green, Miles Turner, Jared Vanderbilt. All rookie team, Josh Christopher, Jalen Green, David Duke Jr., Scotty Barnes, Jonathan Kaminga. That third team got too many wild like there's so many wild cards on there. I can't wait to see when that comes out. It's gonna be super interesting. I have this, the post scheduled to start posting in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. super interesting. Um, also interesting the awards because every we've been talking like the pan the pod the panel and the fans, um, kind of we all had like an equal vote, and every everyone voted differently for MVP. Yeah, I I kind of dropped a little innuendo to that one about a month ago, but yeah. This is time um, to unveil. Maybe we'll save the MVP for the last unveil. We'll save MVP for last. So we actually already touched on rookie of the year. Josh Christopher won. Yeah. He had the pod vote and the panel vote. Um, so two out of the three. So he beat out Jalen Green, who had the fan vote. Um, most improved, I didn't vote on because I had two guys in the category. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was actually the only unanimous vote. Uh, and we all but, unanimously voted for drum roll, please. Da-da-da-da-da. That was a weak ass drum roll. Miles Turner. <laughs> yeah. Um, Miles he, Turner. He, that was cool. I'm not going to lie. That meant a lot to me. Um, he actually doesn't even know yet. I haven't told him. Um, that's awesome. But he'll think that's cool. Um, and then MVP, the fans went Shea Jealous Alexander. Not too surprising. We went. We went D'Angelo Russell, and then the panel went Devin Booker. So we had like this three-way tie, mm-hmm. and we were ready to be like, ah, fuck it, pod well, we say, breaks the yeah. breaks the tie, and we were ready to give it to, to D'Angelo Russell. But mm-hmm. after like some thought, we were like Devin Book. This was like the Devin Booker year, you know? What Ironically, I mean? like, of of yeah. I, of. <laughs> <laughs> whatever man. of the three why is it why is that ironically joe it's because we recorded this three days after he got dubbed by like like 40 <laughs> or 50 in game seven like bro this is mad iron this is the worst ending to what a cinderella season this was but either way it's not yeah. about the basketball man it's about the fits right it's not so we ended up giving it to book because he like he had the most posts you know what i mean mm-hmm. there's so many things that go into that like d'angelo russell like i still think maintain was the best dressed dude in the nba this season but didn't mm-hmm. get as many posts. Like Timberwolves just don't get as many pictures and things like that. Um, but yeah, so that ended up giving Devin Booker MVP, which I like I'm not that. mad at. He did his thing this year. He I like that point too. The whole like mm-hmm. he got the most amount of posts. That's he something. did. I don't think there's something. a player posted on League Fits more than Devin Booker this year. Yeah, that says something. That's almost the equivalent of like allowing points per game to take into consideration for like the NBA's MVP was like, Oh, he played the most amount of like games and he scored the most amount of points. That, that's that mean, that means something like, yeah, there's something to said to score 30 a game and you played all 82. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's an argument to be had. So yeah. So I think Devin Booker scored 31 a game, but like, you know, maybe he only played 50. 
he sat out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he didn't game. literally sat that many games. I just mean like how many pictures we got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, and then I will actually got shape photos. OKC is like the best football team in the league. I guess. Um, I would say this too, piggybacking off of the whole, this is Devin Booker's year. I think Devin Booker has the strongest aesthetic in the NBA. We've talked about this a million times, but yeah. I think it's cool. The fact that like, and this is kind of like giving me like flashbacks of last uh, last season's first team when we talked about Frank Jackson and how like everything you could buy like a Frank Jackson outfit in a thrift store or whatever. Yeah. I think it's cool that like Devin Booker, or no, that wasn't the argument. The argue, what we were saying last year was the fact that Frank Jackson got first team without like any like name brands and he wasn't wearing no crazy yeah. clothes. It was everything was like super cut and so or whatever. You can buy every Devin Booker outfit in a thrift store. And I think it's so cool that he's winning like yeah. MVP league. Fits Uniqlo. In a, you could, yeah, you could, Uniqlo you could and put together store, any Devin Booker fit at Uniqlo. Yeah. Was, Which is and you're good. This is not a yeah, diss. That's actually cool. like the biggest compliment we can give. Yeah. Like you can literally dress like the League Fits Rookie of the Year or League Fits MVP for a hundred and fifty dollars. You're set. If, if that, probably less. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. Yeah, so shout out to Devin Booker. This was this was the Devin Booker year on League Fits. It was only right that he got this award. Um, I'm glad that Shay made it that way. The next time, last, because when I met Shay, it was right after we had announced that he didn't make the first team, and it was like kind of uncomfortable. So now, I'm like, it'll be cool <laughs> to get back to. Like, hey, man, what's up, dude? Um, That's funny. Yeah, um, let's run through some of the guys that got votes from different people but didn't make anything. So James Johnson got one vote. It was just from the pan. It was just from us. Um. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because on the panel, Axel Tupain had James Johnson as the first team and the MVP, <laughs> but it wasn't quite enough. But you and I gave James Johnson one vote. He didn't end up making anything. Josh Christopher, we also gave him his only vote. He didn't make any of the League Fits teams, not including the rookie team. Um, Patty Mills got a vote from the panel, and that was his one vote. And then mm-hmm. Jalen Brown got a vote from the fans, which was his only vote. And all those guys are super fly. And all those guys were like, like Patty and Jalen were both like on the cusp for us when we were doing our voting. Oh, you mean Patty and oh Jalen Brown? I thought you meant Jalen Green. No, yeah, no, 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 Jalen Brown. Agree with that. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, these are these are solid selections. So, but, um, uh, yeah, John, John, I'm calling it right now because I get to call my shots. You know how this, this is how it works. Speak Josh out. Christopher. Second team next year, calling it Dude, right now. Maybe first. That's team. a huge jump from J- one Josh vote Christopher total to first team. Uh, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna predict next year. I'm gonna let's predict. Let's both predict next year. Oh yeah, let's give a little predictions. Yeah, I'm yeah. People people like predictions. Pat Bev on first take. Uh, Jordan Clarkson again. Oh my um, Lord. for Kelly Oubre, huh? For MVP. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying my first team. Oh, first team. Jo- Jordan Clarkson for first team again. Yeah. Um, I, I could see Devin Booker maybe falling off a of first team just because like people get like fatigue from seeing like the same aesthetic. So I could see him being like high second team. So we'll circle back be- to that too. Yeah. I want to talk about that too. We'll circle back to that. Talk about it right now. Go ahead. I know. Yeah. So I, w- I just was looking in the comments and people were like getting like we were, they were getting fed up with like Devin Booker at this point. And we were talking about this too a couple podcasts ago. There's yeah. like a certain sense of fatigue that comes with and kind of like his game too. Like I've never seen someone go from like the Phoenix Suns made the finals last year. That's crazy. I hope they win. And hopefully Chris Paul gets his first ring to now like you put the expectation on them. And now everybody's like, book better stop acting like he was not a 17 game win player last year before Chris Paul came. and like people just hating on him and then now the fashion was like man book is so cool and then now like it's oh god yeah. he needs a Dude, new stylist it's like, Devin dang. Booker outfits used to be like a walking 50,000 likes on league fits mm-hmm. and now they're like in line with you know basically just anyone else yeah I'm um, on it. so I, I could see but he's still super fly so I think like he'll probably make the second team next year so I think the first team next year will probably be Jordan Clarkson mm-hmm. Kelly Oubre D'Angelo Russell, Shea, and I think it'll be Josh Christopher or Kyle Kuzma in the last slot. All right, PJ on the first yeah. team next year. Shea, I think Shea, Kuz, 
and Josh Christopher compete for the last two spots on the first team next year. Okay. What do you think? I like that. I, I, I agree with four out of the five. The only, the only person is I'm substituting PJ for the last one, just because I feel yeah. like we're going to get more PJ fits. And that was another thing, too. The reason why PJ is where he is on this list, he made the third team, is because yeah. if he would have got the type of exposure that, like, if he would like played in like a bigger market for like I guess like media team or whatever like OKC you said they have the best yeah. media team if we played for OKC he I highly doubt that he wouldn't make the first team yeah he's so probably like it's MVP just about candidate. we saw yeah like it's five just about PJ Tucker outfits this year exactly and most of them There's were a lot fire, of things that go into consideration fair. most of them he probably went five for five to be honest but but nah, it's just... he did he did the weird shorts thing with the leather jacket <laughs> you know which one I'm yeah. talking about PJ Those Tucker's no the example of you know how we're talking about book went whatever high shooting percentage most points pj tucker in this or this uh analogy would be the guy who played five games and dropped 50 every game it's like dang yeah. bro you need to get on the court more so he's grant williams he he went like <laughs> he he was like left wide open came in the game knocked down like six or seven threes did what he's supposed to do exactly yeah, exactly grant williams Definitely never, ever making a league fits team. <laughs> <laughs> he has you sick all night. Bro. <laughs> never making. Sick. Probably the least cool dude in the NBA, right? Oh, man. There's, a, there's arguments to be had. He has a, you know, it's funny too how like you never meet or you hardly meet any of these people, but you just know like yeah. you've met people like them. And it's like, I know you. Like I yeah. met you before. You just had a different name. You weren't as tall. Like it's right. It's that like, same thing. Bro is like definitely like the Applebee's of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like his like it. outfits and stuff are like the TGI Fridays of <laughs> the NBA. That's hilarious because it makes perfect sense. That's why it's so funny. Wearing like oh, the God. he wears like the mid calf socks and he pulls he pulls the socks he, up. He like, pulls all the, the way. socks like, all the way up to his calves <laughs> and he chokes his Jordan one. No like, scrunching <laughs> the socks. He, yeah, he wears oh, like low God. top sneakers with high top with high top socks stretched all the way out and like shorts and a hoodie. I'm oh, like, man. he's from North Carolina and like it shows. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That is tough. That's funny uh, though. All right, moving so along. Do you want to give predictions for the second team or? Uh, nah, we don't have to do all that. We don't have to dive did, all the way through. I guess. I did. Someone did comment the other day, and there was like when we were doing the honorable mentions, they're like. What if you guys did a dishonorable mentions list? Oh, that's rude. Fit ain't nothing. I have that. That's what I co I commented. I was like, you got peep fit ain't nothing. I think like there needs to be a fit ain't nothing dishonorable mentions list this year. They gotta do Which that. is funny because I think some guys that are on the league fits team would also make <laughs> the dishonorable mentions list. <laughs> <laughs> like Kuz wins that's their funny. MVP, but Kuz flies hell. Yeah. You know. Kuz is, a, and I, I keep bringing this analogy, Kuz is the player who drops 50 and then he'll like drop 10 and then drop 50 and drop 10 and then you look at his averages and he's like, oh yeah, average is 25. But then he's a fashion supervillain, bro. Yeah. Super which gremlin is, of the which NBA. Which is sick. I love super <laughs> villains. Like, give me, give me the Joker. Like, I, I want to root for the Joker. Like, let's get it. I hear um, on that. Yeah. Anyway. Let's, uh, this is your let's cap. You want to do like a prediction for the MVP and most improved? I feel like that's fair. We can do that. Ooh, prediction for most improved. Yeah. Because taking consideration what they did this year most and see who's going to get the biggest is, jump. Most improved is so hard to predict, though, because it's someone that usually the guys that win it are guys that like never dressed up before. So I'm trying, maybe Josh Giddy. I can see Josh Giddy winning most improved. Because he's a guy that's like cool but doesn't dress cool, um. So I could see like him like getting himself like a stylist and like starting to dress. So I'm gonna give Josh Giddy as my most improved next year. Yeah, I think that's the formula to getting a league fit's most improved. You have to be a guy yeah. who has the cool aesthetic, but their clothes don't match. And for that reason, I'm gonna say most improved next year is gonna be John ja Morant. I feel like John ja Morant's gonna ditch the, the little suits or whatever, the little Nike suits, and he's gonna start. Dressing nah, up. bro, he's too like. There's no chance. Remember this? He's too like. Ja, he loves like me. the like the Balenciaga like print sweaters and like shit like that. I could see it being Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole is an honorable mention this year. I could see Jordan Poole winning Most Improved next year too. Uh yeah, I can see it. 
Even though he's like already yeah. pretty solid, I could see that. I'd say probably him or Josh Giddy. MVP. I want to say Man, Frank I'm Jackson, just... but he'll never get enough fan votes to do that. Um, so I'm gonna say either Jordan Clarkson repeats or D'Lo gets what we probably thought he should have gotten this year. Yeah, I'm gonna go with D'Lo on that one too because he probably yeah. should have got it this year. But yeah, so D'Lo, all you gotta do is do the same thing you did lot this year, and you're good, D'Lo. MVP's yeah. in lock. And of course, you know, we always have Jordan Clarkson to fall back on. True. Yeah. Um, if this was your first time listening to the podcast, thank you. What were you doing? Where were yeah, you, what are you doing? Today? Where have you been? Where have you been? Um, we do this. It drops every Wednesday morning and every Friday morning. Sometimes it's just me and Joe. Sometimes we have guests. Um, but yeah, usually we just dick around for 30 minutes and it turns out pretty fun. So thanks for coming to the first ever. This is like the first ever like analytical episode. We're like, we drop numbers. Um, Yeah. We have an Excel spreadsheet in front of us. Yeah. We have an Excel spreadsheet in front of us. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Welcome to the first analytical league fits pod until we do this one in a year, but, uh, we hope you stick around. So thanks for tapping in. Shout out Chrome Hearts. Shout out Malika Andrews. Shout out Malika Andrews, man. Shout out Malika Andrews. It's a vibe. I'll drift first team this season. Yo, go follow Survival of the Fitted wherever you get your podcasts. And then have three of your friends follow the podcast. And then have three of their friends follow the podcast. And then boom, it's the League Fits Pyramid.